If you want to revolutionize your work with AI and learn how to leverage the power of context engineering to achieve unprecedented results with Claude, this video reveals strategies that will supercharge your AI projects. This right here is why I use Claude Code with Docker, GitHub, and Playwright alongside context engineering and why I use it more than Klein, more than Cursor, more than Windsurf, and all of those other AI dev platforms. And also in this video, I'm gonna give you a very special, completely free context engineering template that you can get from GitHub and get started in under 10 minutes. Also, you can get this completely free, no strings attached SOP that explains everything in the process of context engineering using this GitHub template, which is of course also in the SOP. Now, if you wanna support me in any way on my channel or learn anything about anything more about what I talk about in this video, definitely check out the pinned comment or the description and check out the school community. Also special mention to Bright Data, the kind of main sponsor of the channel. Huge shout out to Bright Data. They have a really, really good MCP. If you just go on Google, type Bright Data MCP. This will protect you while you're doing a lot of web scraping online if you need a proxy service, or if you just need to scrape certain websites like LinkedIn and Facebook, which are often extremely difficult to scrape. You can use Bright Data, which even Gina doesn't handle uh, things like LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay, with all that being said, let's talk about context engineering. Now, what is context engineering? Context engineering is basically an extension of prompt engineering, I would say. And to be honest with you, all it really is, is like a series of prompts that have been engineered to do like a task in a certain way. Now, if you don't know, context engineering originally was created by uh, Rasmus here. Definitely check out his YouTube channel. And then Cole Medin um, took what Rasmus had done and turned it into uh, the template, which I then forked that template and changed it slightly because I don't really want to add new features to something. I believe Claude Code is already extremely good at doing that. I want to build things from scratch, right? From absolute zero, build some kind of MVP or full project or app or whatever but have it built in such a way where I don't have to worry about errors or anything like that. So prompt engineering could take us so far, but the thing that was really missing from prompt engineering, and to be honest, what I found was missing from a lot of the other context engineering templates was the context. So what I did was I took prompt engineering and I added, sorry, context engineering, and I added the context, right? So the system I'm gonna show you today creates a local llm.txt kind of for all of the text stack that you are using, right? So I mentioned Pydantic in the initial.md file. I'll go through this in a moment, but if you can see documentation, any link that's mentioned here will be fully scraped and turned into like a llm.txt for the LLM to read whenever it needs to. Okay, so how does this work with Claude code? If I just show you quickly, now, all you need to do is clone the project, right? So git clone. It's now available on Windows, by the way, Claude Code. So it's very easy to download. There's no excuse anymore. So we'll just call this, uh, I'm making a video. So that will clone it into there. So CD, I'm making. There we go. And then if I write Claude here. Now, one thing that people keep doing, and I keep getting comments about this. Okay, so for some reason, Windows isn't working, which is hilarious. So I'm using WSL here. If I do slash generate PRP, you'll see this is how it works. We add custom. I'm going to go through this in a second, but just so you know, the way this works is we, we've added custom instructions to Claude code, which executes a series of prompts in the project. Now, remember, I just cloned this uh, repository onto my local machine. So you can do the exact same thing, right? You clone this repo, you get it on your local machine, you CD into it, right? So I said CD, I'm making a video. And then if I do LS, you'll see the con the context engineering intro is in this folder. Now, one thing that people are doing is they're doing git clone and then context engineering intro like this. Actually, I'm just... So I'll do MKD 
bad example cd bad example so don't do this right git clone and then just this make sure you put a dot here because if you don't do that what it'll do is if i write claude now and then write generate uh prp there's nothing here because i'm not inside the correct directory you need to cd first into context engineering intro and then do claude and then do generate prp you can see it's there okay so let's talk a little bit about what generate prp does and then the other command just so you know is execute PRP, right? So there are two commands. So let's look at what they actually do. So if I go back to my example here, when you get, th this is what a completed template looks like. But if I just open up the, actually, let me just do it the, the good way. Because So if I cd dot dot cd and then cd into, um, what was it called? I'm making a video. And then do Claude, no, sorry, do code dot, right? This will open up Visual Studio Code. Super useful, guys. <laughs> Once you learn how to use Terminal Vit, you'll actually understand that Terminal is amazing. And there's a reason Claude Code uses it. I don't even use Visual Studio Code anymore, except when I'm making videos, really. So if I go here, let's have a look at what these do. So if I go on dot Claude and then commands, you'll see the two commands, right? So a cool, one cool thing about this is, let's say you wanted to add another step. You could technically just add a command here, right? Let's say you wanted to add like uh, slash test everything, for example. You could do the same thing and then you set the command here, right? And then it appears on Claude code. But basically what this does, this is generate uh, PRP. All it does is um, it reads through this file, or sorry, you need to make a file initial.md, right? Copy initial.example, put it here. You need to edit your requirements and what you want, right? So let me just show you an example of what mine look like. So let's go to initial.md. Let's just put this here. So this is what mine looks like, right? So this is um, an example that you can use. You can pause the video. Basically, put any documentation links here. Just put the base documentation link. Just go on Google, type in like, um, you know, AI pedantic um, docs. And then just click the first one and then just copy the link and put it here. Right. And then that's the initial.md. So you whatever you want here, features, you can be as complicated or as uncomplicated as you want. This is quite a simple example here. So all generate PRP does is it reads this, right? Sorry, it reads initial.md and then it executes this prompt that has been engineered in order to create a PRP, right? As an example, PRP here that you can use, that you can have a look through. Um, this was created from one example of mine. The reason this is here is because this is a slightly wrong example and this wouldn't build anything of any use at all for anybody, so uh, I left it in. So just as an example, I'm not gonna go through all this in this video, I'm not gonna actually build anything. Um, I've already built loads of things. You can watch my previous videos. I've shown this off many, many times. I will be making more videos about this when it's an improved method very, very soon, but for now, there's nothing new. Uh, to show I'm just making a complete guide to it. So what we can do is, I don't do generate PRP off the bat. I have a prompt that I like to run first. So I'll just go to the school community where I keep all my prompts. Uh, you can find these on various videos across the internet. It's quite, it's not the most organized in terms of uh, where to find things, but this is a much more organized place. Oh, it's also, it's in the document uh, that, that, that's in the description, actually. So never mind. Uh, so yeah, I like to send this first. What this does is I find that like reminding AI itself or allowing AI to discover something itself, like reading something and then reporting back to you and saying, okay, got it, boss. That's what I'll do is the best way to do things, right? And this Gina key, by the way, is just, um, it's a random key. The cool thing about Gina is at any time, if you run out of credits, if it says no credits, you just literally go open a new incognito, go to gina.ai, press API down here, and then just scroll down and copy a new API key, right? So what I'm going to say in a second is, okay, so I'm going to say use this Gina API key, right? And then you can see this is basically just a summary of everything uh, that it should do. And then we'll hit enter. I realize actually I missed a step here, which is in the um, the document, which is adding the playwright MCP. I completely forgot to do this. 
Okay, so let's just put out what we can do is we can add this and then let's do this command here, which is claw dangerously skip permissions. And then I'm going to whack a dash C on the end to continue the previous conversation. This now has the ability to do everything. It says MCB failed. Okay, so as this video is not a complete run through, I'm not too bothered about this MCP not working, but you should add this MCP. This exact command was working yesterday from the document. I don't know how it's possible that suddenly it's... Oh, I'm on WSL. Okay, I added it there. That's so annoying. I completely forgot. So I'm going to add this here. Uh, and then this is Mac slash Linux. Okay, so let's just say continue, and I'm just going to say please spin up multiple subagents to speed up research. This will now do the research phase. If you want to see the process, like this entire process, just like A to Z, right? Check out this video here from Zero to Your First AI Agent. I decided to make an AI agent in this video, and but I used context engineering to do it. This is me filling in the initial .md and everything else. This is more. This video is more like a high level guide to context engineering and my template. Okay, so let's talk about the power of context engineering. What this basically does is instead of blindly trying to code certain things, right? So if you say use open router and use certain models, right? In the initial .md, you'll see that I actually have specific models, GPT 4.1 mini, Gemini 2.5 pro. But bonus points if you can guess why I'm deciding to use these two models. I won't say why these two models specifically, but bonus points if you can write a comment that explains why I would pick these two models specifically, what's special about them. And what it does is instead of blindly guessing about GPT-41 Mini, what it actually does is it does in-depth research on 4.1 Mini, including the input, the output, etc., etc., all that good stuff. Look, at, it's just amazing. There's so much information here. It doesn't have to blindly code open router code. You don't have to feed it any information. It's all just going to be here from the very beginning. Same thing with Pydantic AI. If you don't know, they have AI agents inside Pydantic, and you're basically giving all of this code, or you're giving a, a library of code, and then inside the instructions, it basically says you have this library of code, read it. And like I said, the really cool thing is that you can customize this massively, right? So at the beginning, when I first got this, it didn't have anything to do with Docker in there. It had nothing to do with uh, documentation as a source of truth. It had nothing to do with Gina scrapes. Um, I added this. And oh, no, I don't think I added this. I added this, I think, maybe. Oh, okay, it did already have something about Docker. My bad, Cole. Never mind. And there's just a lot of information here that I added for my specific use cases. Like this, create the research directory, the library, right? Take my tech as sacred truth. If you've ever tried to code AI with AI before, you'll know that they're obsessed with uh, GPT-4 and Claude Sonnet 3.5. If you ask any AI to code for you, they will code those two models, right? So I finally got it to the point where I could say, generate PRP, and the PRP would include actual model information and stuff like that that I want my system to use specifically. Again, I, sh I, I showed this in the last video I did here on my open router stats. I could see that it was using 4.1 mini and 2.5 pro. This is the first time that without me doing like an hour and a half of just saying, like begging it to use specific models or whatever, it would finally use them. Like I would have to feed it the specific documentation or whatever. This is the first time that it just GPT 4.1 mini, bang. Gemini 2.5 pro, bang. All good there. And then another really cool thing about this is it doesn't just build like bullshit. Like it actually builds like DOM. This is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, right? So I oh know uh, with Node, I think actually. So you can see it's got things here. This is just helpful to know because it's like it's building things natively with all of the important stuff in, right? And the really cool thing is as well is it's, it removes errors. But also, there are still going to be errors, right, just because of the nature of coding. So what it does is it uses Playwright and Docker. Docker to see the server logs, I believe. I'm not a developer, but I think this is how it works. Docker shows server logs, and then uh, Playwright can see these logs, right? This is obviously just saying that I'm not logged in. But it can see the actual browser errors, 
which means it can get to the point where you're building something similar to what you would build on Replit. But instead of using Replit, you're using your own system. So if you don't know, like Claude Co can read the logs of Docker, which is basically like, like I'll just show you an example here. These are the logs from my application that I've built, SEO Grove, right? And one thing that it does that it was doing at the beginning of this video, actually, is it reads its own logs to understand its own mistakes and then fixes them, right? So I've managed to make a system here purely, well, it's managed to make a system here, right? And I didn't, I basically gave it very little input. This is, I mean, this took me like six months previously to build this. Now it took me like three hours, I want to say, right? And this is all from it just reading its own output and improving. Holy shit, that is good. Jesus. Okay, guys, I'm going to leave the video there. I just wanted to talk a little bit more about context engineering and give people kind of a high level about why it's so damn good. It's kind of like having Replit right on your computer and fully customizable because the problem with replit is you kind of have to do what replit wants in a certain way like how it wants to build it or whatever the cool thing about claude code is you can build anything right and the cool thing about context engineering is it powers claude code to build anything thank you so much for watching guys if you're watching all the way to the end of the video you're an absolute legend and i will see you very very soon with some more content peace out